Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It is Friday, and tomorrow is Saturday, the Saturday on which we have the food pantry this month. Come join us, and whether you can join us or not, please keep that event in prayer. Let's, as a church family, cover that that event in prayer so that we may represent Jesus rightly. Speaking of representing Jesus rightly, the topic that I want to share with you today, Lord and Lover. Is it appropriate to speak of Jesus as lover? In praise songs, particularly more recent praise songs, there are words like, the more I seek you, the more I find you. The more I find you, the more I love you. I want to sit at your feet, drink from the cup in your hands, lay back against you and breathe. Feel your heartbeat. Wow. Pastor Paul, isn't that a little bit too intense? Pastor Paul, isn't that a little bit too cringy? Pastor Paul, is it legitimate to speak of Jesus as lover in any sense? Good question is to come up, but let's always go back to the scriptures. Let's always go back to the scriptures to answer any kind of these, any kind of questions, especially these that come up regarding the right view of God. The truth is, All throughout the scriptures, Old and New Testament, the Bible speaks of God's love for us as a love between a husband and wife, a love for a husband for his wife. From the very beginning, from the book of Genesis, Adam and Eve are created to display the love within God himself. That the love between husband and wife originates from the very person of God. If you look at the Song of Songs, the, the, the erotic love song of the Old Testament, the song, the book that children were not allowed to read at times until they, they came of age, it says specifically that the love between a husband and wife is the fire of God himself. It originates with God. In the book of Hosea, God is the husband spurned but seeking. God is the husband spurned by his wife and yet seeking her still and buying her back for himself. All throughout the scriptures, Isaiah 54 is just one representative one where God is the the husband of Israel continuing to woo her and woo her and woo her and bring her back to himself. In the gospel, Jesus himself describes Jesus himself describes himself as the bridegroom. Ephesians chapter 5 also tells us that the husband's love for his wife and the wife's love for her husband is to be modeled between by modeled in the way that Jesus loves the church. That Jesus' love, the bridegroom's love for the church, the bride, is the model after which husbands should strive to love their wives and wives should strive to love their husbands. So yeah, pretty clear. And when everything, everything culminates together in Revelation 21, we are told that when the bride, when the church appears, she appears as the bride of Christ. And these are only a sampling, literally off the top of my head. Off the top of my head, I am bringing these to you. It's all throughout the scriptures that God describes. One of God's favorite descriptions of himself is as the husband of his people. And yeah, in principle, if you look at the Song of Solomon, if you look at the fact that Jesus is speaking to individuals, individuals, and how they are to deal with him as the coming bridegroom, It's not illegitimate for individuals to see Jesus as Lord and lover. I see that in the scriptures. Then how about that song that we sang that I mentioned a little bit earlier? (laughs) I would say that the songs of today... When we sing them wrongly, when we have wrong thoughts because of them, at root, it has to do with our deficiency, not the deficiency of God's love for us. 
not the deficiency of God's love as our bridegroom. We think of his love, as soon as we speak, think of bridegroom, we think of his love in very human, romantic, and sometimes very broken, very perverted terms. And so it becomes something distasteful, cringy. But I want to say to you, thinking of God, thinking of Christ, Jesus, as our bridegroom, our thoughts of him are not too intimate. They are not intimate enough. Do you hear me? <laughs> Rather, they are not intimate enough. They are not intense enough. That is why in worship, in intimacy with God, we sing words of worship. Not just intimacy, but intimate worship. We don't do that in human relationships, right? Rightly so. Well, some people do. Some people say, oh, I love my girlfriend so much, I kiss the ground she walks on. I, I worship the ground she walks on. You got issues. <laughs> I mean, it sounds nice, but you shouldn't worship her or the ground she walks on. But you should worship Jesus. You should worship before him. And rightly, our loving expressions to him and of him are more intense, more lofty, more dramatic. We fall on our faces before him. We kiss his feet. That's what we do. <laughs> so you see, yes, maybe our thoughts of Jesus as our loving Lord and lover are not deep enough, are not intimate enough, are not intense enough at times. Now, let me take it a, little, a step further. Jesus is the source of all true love. All of our broken expressions of love are dim reflections of his eternal perfect love. Did you hear me? All of our broken expressions of love, and that's every form of human love, are dim reflections of his perfect love and all satisfying love. That's why all broken forms of love are less than fully satisfying. His is fully satisfying if we could only enjoy it the way that we were meant and designed to do. So, it is right to say that Jesus is the lover that my soul longs for and that all the lovers in my life, whether that's my family, my pet, or my husband or wife, they all just point to him. There is something to be said for those people who their loving longings will not be fully satisfied, which is everybody. I don't care how great of a husband-wife relationship you have, that there will be times of disappointment. There will be times of misunderstanding. There will be times of deficiency because they are deficient. They, they are broken. They are meant to point to the one who is not broken. So we look to him for satisfaction and give room to our loved ones to be broken and to grow. There, there's a word here for those who will remain single for the rest of their lives. Jesus is the love relationship that ultimately satisfies there's a word here for those who struggle with same-sex attraction, even though they know that the Bible is clear on how God views homosexuality. And some of those people will have to remain non-married for the rest of their lives. To them, I can say that Jesus, as the lover of our soul, is more than enough. There are going to be many people within marriages that think that they should be seeking many lovers, like the woman in, uh, in John chapter 4. And to those, you must say that God's way is better. Again, Jesus' love is more than enough. In human relationships, the one that expresses the relationship of God's love to us, the husband-wife relationship, there, that will be less than fully satisfying at, at times by design to point you to the one, the one who truly satisfies and that's King Jesus. King Jesus. Not my husband, wife, parents, brothers, sisters, boyfriends, girlfriends, or friends, whatever the case may be. But Jesus alone, the lover of our soul. Let's sing his praise. Jesus. Lover of my soul, Jesus. 
Jesus, I will never let you go. You're taking me from the miry clay, set my feet upon the rock. Now I know I love you, I need you. Though my world may fall. Lover of my soul, Jesus, I will never let you go. Taking me from the miry clay, set my feet upon the rock, and now I know I love you. I need you, and though my Fall, I'll never let you go, my Savior, my closest friend. I will worship you until the very end. Lord, may our expressions of love to you. Be more intense, more intimate, and truly worshipful. More and more truly than anything else that we might desire. Because you deserve it, and because you are our sole satisfaction. We were designed this way. In Jesus' name.